to start this class with humming bee breath. Now, the humming bee is otherwise known as Brahmari in Sanskrit. If you haven't done it before, then go to the breathing technique section and you'll learn a little bit about the benefits of it and how to do it. I'm going to give you a little bit of an explanation now, but we're going to do an inhale and then we're going to go into the Brahmari breath and then we'll do that three times. Inhale, Brahmari breath, inhale, Brahmari breath. And basically you can send wherever you want this sound, okay? And that's what you're honing into. You're moving away from any other sense and just going into this place of sound and maybe a little bit through sensation, through the kinesthetic feedback of where you're getting this vibration within your, um, within your body. So you can send it down to the root of your spine, you can send it into the mid of your chest, you can send it to the back of your throat. Maybe have a little practice of that, so each breath try and send it to a different place, and that is basically changing the frequency through different notes, okay? Same as singing, right? We can have a lower note, we can have a higher note. So a lower note's gonna send it down further, a higher note's gonna send it further up. So I want you to take your middle finger and your index finger together, place them over the eyes, both of your thumbs in towards your ears, if you don't want to do this, then just go into wave breathing or another type of breath that you feel comfortable with. When you take a big inhale there, Once you've done that, open your eyes, take your hands down. So there's one Brahmi breath. Now I want you to do three Brahmi breaths, like I said. Your first one, you're going to send it right down to the bottom of your spine, okay? Right down low. Then you're going to send the next one a little bit higher, so a little bit of a higher note, and then you're going to go towards the throat with an even higher note. Now I want you to do inhale, low, inhale, mid, inhale, high, but you're not taking your fingers out of your ears. When you are finished, open your eyes. Maybe I've finished before you, maybe I haven't. I'll wait a couple of seconds after I've done my three anyway. Okay, you ready? Let's do this. Take the fingers over the eyes, thumbs into the ears, big inhale in. your hands down towards your knees and just try and experience that silence and concentration that's being created through the Brahmi breath, the humming bee breath. And start to regulate the breath and bring it down deep into the lungs. Feel the stomach rise. Feel it fall away the breath. Move out through the nose into the atmosphere in front of you. And we'll carry on this sense of calm through the breath, also through the body and the mind, through the whole of this practice today. And that's what it's all about for this release and recharge class. It's about bringing, into, bringing you into a place of 
relaxation, letting go, and getting the most out of the postures that we're going to go into. Trying to surrender from the mind, trying to surrender into the stretches. Take the palms together, rub the palms, meet the hands up, place the hands over the eyes. Take note of the different colours in the back of the eyelids there. I'm seeing the colour blue, what colour are you seeing? Slowly open your eyes into your hands, spread the fingers apart, and slide down the hands from the face. And what you do from here is I want you to take your hands back behind you, feet just over shoulder width apart, really slow class here. So slow them down. We don't want to be doing anything quickly. The more, the slower you do things, the more you can get in touch with your body and actually feel where the stretch is occurring, know where the position of your body is, and then once you've got this slower controlled movement nailed down, then they're good bases to build quicker movements on because you've already refined the movement down to a T. So hands are out to the side. Keep the feet flat at this moment in time. And just pull your chest up towards the front, draw the shoulders back and try and lengthen up, lengthen up and retract the head. Don't look up to the sky. Keep it there. And then back into the centre. We're going to drop the knees over towards the left hand side, trying to touch that right knee towards the floor, left knee towards the floor. Squeeze up through the glute on that top leg. All the way up to the top, come over towards the right hand side, drop the knees down, keeping the arms in exactly the same place. You might get a nice stretch through the front of the left shoulder into the pec on that side as well. Up and over again. Inhale to exhale over to the left hand side. Inhale to exhale over to the right hand side. Maybe a couple of clicks through the back. I just had a, a few there. Just mobilizing through. More the, the mid back here because you're planting in this top half. The top half's not moving, but you're moving the bottom half through these ranges. Okay, come over towards the right hand side, lift up onto your right knee and squeeze up through the hips. Take your hand onto your hip there, come down with the bum, roll over towards the left hand side, plant strong through this left hand side, push through the middle of the hand, squeeze up, right hand onto the right hip, drop the bum down over towards the right hand side, squeeze up again. So feel the stretch through the side body, over towards the left hand side, up we go again. Down with the bum, up and over. This time, bring the left hand up and over the top, squeeze up and through, and then roll back round to the other way, up and round. That's it. Squeeze and draw your gaze up towards the sky. Have that arm just hanging, it doesn't have to be in a rigid position, not straight. Back round again, up towards the right hand side, left hand up over the top, squeeze through the glutes, set that intention early on, and then back down towards the centre. I'm just doing this face on to you because some of the, the postures that I'm doing are, are good to show you from the front view, some are good from the side view. So you should be facing towards the front of your mat here, just so you haven't got your legs off the end. Now turn the toes up, draw the chest up towards the sky, and what I want you to do here is just act as if you're cradling a baby, okay? If you've got the range, you can go foot in towards the crease of the left elbow, and you can push down with your right hand. And you just rock from left to right here. Rocking from left to right, trying to keep that left hand side as rigid and as grounded as possible. Might be a little bit of movement there, but you're trying to move this leg around the whole of the body. Good. All right. Take the hands back again. Step out to the right hand side, then drop this knee down towards the center. We open up through external rotation, through to internal rotation, rotating up. Keep activated on that bottom foot. This is a really good class to do if you're already a little bit warm. We're not going to really be moving into any upright positions, there won't be any sun salutations, 
through the whole of this class. It's all about mobilization and also deep stretches as well. Deep stretches which can be associated with yin. You may have heard of yin yoga before, so moving deeper into these stretches, spending a long time in maybe two or three. I think this release and recharge class that we're doing today is a little bit of a mixture between yin and restorative. Okay, bring both feet forwards again. A nice upright position. Become aware. Draw the shoulders back. Lock into the floor with the, the seat bones. Again, try and pull up with this hip. If that's too much feeling, just do a little bit of down pressure here, or you can even just take it onto your thigh and, and push through towards the floor. Whatever's good for you. Take the outside of the left foot, place it into the crease of the elbow, and then push it down towards the ground and rotate through again from left to right. Keep moving through that range. Keep pushing down towards the floor, moving through. Probably moving a little bit too fast there. So we just go from left to right. We're going to be working through the hips to start with. We've got a really nice mat routine, which I'm going to show you from a couple of different angles. Come round and back. And then drop that left foot out to the side, hands come to the rear, push up the chest, and then start to rotate in and out with that left hip. So we're working through, this is the, the ball and socket joint of the, the hip is a very, in nature, ball and socket joint, there's a lot of movement. Um, it's not as mobile as the shoulder, but there's a lot of movement there we've got. Flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, rotation, internal, external rotation. Lots of different movements that occur there. Unlike something like the knee joint, which is just extension and flexion. So bending and extending the knee. Okay, come back towards the centre. Both feet up, tuck the toes towards the head. Draw the shoulders back again there. I'm going to go into a, a variation of a forward fold. But first, we're going to bring our right foot in towards the inner thigh. We're going to inhale up into the sky and then exhale fall and fold. Just going to do a few of those. Inhale up into the sky, follow the fingers of the gaze, exhale down. Inhale and exhale down. All right, bring your foot like so. So you, you've got your heel directly in line with your seat bone. If you want to grab a pillow and stick it underneath your bum, just give you a little bit of a raise and allow you to get more forward uh, flexion, then feel free to do that. We go up into the sky and we exhale down. You don't have to grab onto your foot, you can grab onto the, the mid of the shin, grab onto the knee. If you've got a strap, you can hold it around your foot as well. Inhale up, exhale through. Inhale up, exhale through. Inhale up, exhale through. Back up and through. Extend that right leg. Bring the left sole of the foot to the inside of the right thigh. Inhale up into the sky. Exhale, fold. Keep these toes activated on the front foot. Inhale up, exhale through. Inhale. Lengthen. Exhale, fold. And then bring the left foot flat like we did on the other leg. Inhale into the sky. Exhale through. So I know for this side, I'm a little bit tighter. So you can feel these sides. If I was doing my own practice, I would probably spend a little bit longer on this side just to allow myself to, well, inch towards having balance between the two sides. And that's what we ultimately want to aim for, balancing everything through the body, the mind, life in general. And exhale. Up and through. All right. Coming into this next posture, it's quite difficult if you haven't got the range through your hips. So you can use you can use a cushion. You can use a block. It's up to you. Just try and improvise with something in your house if you haven't got any equipment. And basically, what you're trying to do is you're trying to have this triangle in between your legs. 
And the way it works is, and this is, you need to have a fair bit of range through your hips. I'm going to have my lower leg on the left hand side parallel to the front of my mat. Obviously I'm showing you from this angle. In fact, let's quickly show you. I'm going to keep that foot parallel towards or this lower leg parallel to the front of the mat and then I'm going to bring the right foot on top okay and this is the posture this is the posture itself and as you can see from me in that position I'm just using the side part of my mat here there's a little bit of a gap if you need to you can have something underneath this knee and you can also stick something underneath there all right and what I want you to do from there is just sit with this posture. Just sit with this posture to start off with. If it's really uncomfortable, then just come into a cross leg position. Now, coming into a cross leg position, I just want you to come here, pull up the chest, and push down the knees. Okay? I'm going to come back into this pose that I was in before. And if you look down, you should see a triangle shape in between your legs. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a little bit of downward pressure, not too much. And I can't get all the way down my foot, but you know what, I've probably reduced to by about half the distance between my foot and my knee, just by being here for a little bit of a while. And I'm only, I'm literally just resting my hand on here, letting the weight of my arm send the knee down towards the foot and you're just breathing in again try and keep that posture if you can't do it then maybe put your wall your wall your back against the wall and that'll allow you to keep a nice upright erect spine and that's what we're always trying to promote in any class is posture posture is key to a lot of things and you can see there again getting a little bit lower the longer you stay in these poses the more your body starts to trust you, trust itself to be in these positions and it just eases off. But you need to use the breath. See that knee lower. See how far that is now between my knee and the foot. And I haven't really created any downward pressure. See I've pushed down there now but my body isn't ready for it. Inhale to exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Close your eyes, step back. Okay. Take the hands back behind you. Right foot out, left foot out. And then just rock these knees from left to right. It's probably going to be a little bit sore. I'm going to do the other side so you'll be able to see which side is more mobile through that position that we've just been in. So square off this right foot towards the front of the mat. I like I'm doing either side of the mat so you can see it. And look in between the legs, try and get that triangle shape from your, the back side of your, your bottom leg moving down towards the groin and again if you need to have any support underneath the knees or in this gap here then feel free and just let your body settle into this pose I actually see some people who sit like this they sit in this position and because they sit in this position um, or in a cross leg position on the floor obviously spending more time within a position allows you to relax into it your body gets used to it and you start to get more length and your whole structure of your body changes and this is something that you need to understand is that you can change the structure of your body but it takes time and it takes commitment to do that don't just expect to be able to do one of these classes and you're going to be able to get 50 percent better range Okay. You probably will get it very, um, you'll get range from the start of the class to the end of the class, but it's all about trying to consistency.
keeping on doing classes, keep working on the parts that you know that you're, you're lacking in flexibility or you're lacking in strength and that's what brings you into this new realm that you've maybe never been before. So inhale there, exhale release, inhale, straight spine exhale, inhale, exhale, bring the hands behind, the longer you stay in them, the less it is to come out of them. And you want to be going into this area that it feels Maybe it feels a little bit of discomfort, but it feels like it's under your control. If it starts turning towards pain in any of those stretches, then come out of it, all right? We've all got different limitations in pain and also in physiologically through our body. All right, so what we're gonna do for this next stretch is we're going to use the front of the mat. So I'm going to quickly flip round, just taking you to a different angle so that you can follow along um, a little bit easier than me being sideways on on the mat. And it allows you to use the mat as a little bit of a reference point as well. So we'll face towards the front of the mat. What I want you to do here is, I want you to take this lower part of the right leg so it frames the front of the mat. And you can have the toes so they're tucked underneath. And then from there, I want you to bring this left foot up. The left foot comes up into a 90 degree position and the inside of the foot skirts down the outside of the mat. And this will bring us into our first hip stretch. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna take your hand onto this knee and you're gonna guide that knee in line with the side of the mat. You're gonna inhale and exhale and drop in. So move in and out the stretch. We'll do a couple of stretches here. And we will do both sides. That's it, drop through, get a little bit more range every single time. Try not to let that foot drop to the outside of the mat. Try and stay strict and you don't have to get down as far as me here. And just stay there for a few breaths. Feel it opening up through this right hand side. Make sure you're squeezing through the bum. All right, come up, and then I want you to walk the hands out towards the front and push the hips back. So you're trying to lengthen out through the spine here. Push the bum back. Keep it there. That's it. Okay. Where do you want to go from here? A little bit of a Spider-Man stretch as such. You're going to bring the foot out a little bit further, toes are pointing towards the outside of the mat now, and you're going to sit back onto this heel, like so. And you can use the hands to take a little bit of the weight if you want to, because maybe it's too much for you at this point in time. If that's too much on the toes underneath, have a go sitting onto the heel, whatever feels best for you. And what I want you to think about here is the hip position. So we're always going to try and tilt the pelvis forwards. Push the bum to the sky, push the chest to the sky, and start to feel the stretch through the inner side of the groin. Push the chest along, always pushing along. And all we are going to do here is we're going to cycle through this. We're going to go toes up, sit down a little bit further. Come up, toes down, sit down. Come up, toes up, sit down. Come up, toes down, sit down. Toes up, sit down, come up. Toes down, sit down, come up. Feel yourself starting to get a little bit deeper here. Inhale, exhale. Don't forget to breathe. Toes up, sit down, stand up. Toes down, sit down, stand up. Toes up. And you can also do this if you, if that's too much to the knee, you can just have the hands to the front and you can again control from this position. Now from there, take a little bit of weight through your hands and then you're going to bring the right foot to the outside of the top corner, top left hand corner of your mat and you're going to come into this forward fold position and rest down there. So pushing the bum towards the rear 
And then I want you to take your hands onto your ankles and pull the chest up long and release off. If you can't grab your ankles, go mid shin, wherever you can create a flat back position. Let the head rest. Inhale up. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Okay. Come onto the hands. Step back with the right foot. Drop that knee down again. Come back into the same position. So let's go onto the front of the foot this time. If you can manage it. This is a lot harder. Push the bum towards the sky. Drop through as you release off and come up with the bum, sit down, back up, toes up, sit down, back up, toes down, sit down, back up, toes up, sit down, back up, toes down, sit down, back up from there. Walk in with that foot. So you see we're just reversing the whole way here, but we've got our back foot. On the front rather than having the toes tucked. Start to guide that knee over towards the top or the bottom left hand corner of your mat down this edge again. Keep using that as a reference point. Keep moving through that. Breathing out. And bring the hands down, push the bum towards the rear. Release off, push the bum towards the rear, release off, push the bum towards the rear, release off, and then bring both knees round to the front of the mat, and drop into your child's pose, and we'll go on to the other side. I'll just magically come round to the other side then, crazy yeah. This time I'm going to bring my left leg to frame the top side of the mat. My toes are tucked in the bottom of the top left hand corner and knees in this top right hand corner. And then I'm going to come out to the opposite side exactly like I did with my left leg. Take your fingers onto your knee, again guided down this outside edge of the mat, dropping the hips through. You should be able to feel the hips open up. Keep pushing through. Inhale. Exhale, push. Inhale. Exhale, push through. Inhale. Exhale, push through. That's it. Keep moving between the two. Sink every single time. Always squeeze and bum cheeks to protect the hips and protect the back as well. And then take the hands down towards the front. I'm going to push long with the back, sit back slightly, come out of it. Exhale, sit back. Inhale. Exhale, sit back. When I say sit back, I mean tilt the pelvis, not sitting back onto your heel. Exhale, sit back. Okay, from there, I would stretch the right leg. We go for the toes pointing towards the outside edge again, and we sit back towards the heel, and we push the bum towards the sky. Tilt the hips, be able to stretch through the inner groin. Just settle there for a a couple of breaths before we start to change it up again. Like I said, you can go from a high heel position if this hurts you, your toes or it hurts your knee. And you can just turn up from there. Just sit back, turn the foot up, toes are pointing up, but sit the bum down. I call this a Spider-Man stretch. Come down with the toes, ease off. Sit back down with the toes down. Sit up, turn the toes up. Exhale, sit back. Toes up, toes down, come up, sit down, toes down, toes come up as you come up, sit back, toes pointing upwards. One more time, 
the toes to the front, sit down. Okay, and then go strong through the arms. Take that left foot, so it's framing the front of the mat, and come into your forward fold position. Just rest down there for a second. I'm going to grab onto the angles. So grab onto the angles or the shins, wherever you can create a flat back. Pull up long, release off. Inhale, exhale, release off. Inhale, exhale, release off. Inhale, exhale, release off. And then just let the arms hang from there. Try not let the toes drop out towards the sides. Always have your head rested down. And then go heavy on the hands again. Drop that knee down. This time come on to the front of that foot. Turn the toes up, sit the bum down. Come back up towards the top. Sit back down. Depending on how far you stretch the, foot, uh, the leg out to the side is the amount that you're going to get the stretch through the inner groin. So if that's too much for you, then just walk it in a little bit more. Don't sit back as far. Toes turn up, sit back, up, toes down, sit back, come up, toes up, sit back, come up, toes down, sit down, toes up, come up, sit down, toes down, sit down, okay, come back up towards this top plank. Walk this foot in a little bit further towards the left knee. Find that same position, 90 degrees. Push the knee to the outside again. Keep a nice upright posture. Keep pushing through. slightly or tilt the pelvis, push the chest long, release off, inhale to exhale, inhale to exhale away, keep a nice flat position with the foot, push down through the, the knuckle of the big toe, keep that knee as close as you can in line with the outer edge of this mat, alright and then walk back through towards the front of the mat, come right towards the centre and then drop into child's pose there. We're going to go into a really nice chilled pose next. So from child's pose, you're just going to come up and sit down on your bum. You can use a cushion for this or you can use a block. I'm going to use a cushion just because You've maybe got some pillows or something that's close to a cushion at home. So you don't have to buy any specialist equipment to do it. And this is what it's like. Basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring this cushion right underneath my lower back. So it's about midway up my back, okay? Covering the whole of the lumbar spine. My legs are going to be extended up over my head. And if you find the right sort of height for this block or this cushion underneath your bum, then it should allow you to just let your legs hang over your head. If this isn't working for you, then just shuffle your bum in towards the crease of the wall and have your legs up against the wall, like this. Yep. So you can just have it like that. Maybe that's a little bit more relaxing for you. It's not about creating a stretch for this one, it's about letting your legs just relax here and let the blood flush all the way down towards the heart and pump out to different parts of the body. And we're just going to do 10 breaths down into the stomach from here. So take an inhale, make sure you've got a good little bit of a good lift through the hips. Take an inhale, down into the stomach. Exhale, release. Inhale. Exhale, release. 
inhale. Exhale, release. Inhale. Exhale. This last part, just going to bend your knees and let the legs rest there. So five more breaths, deep into the stomach. Slowly release the breath through the nose again. Let the hands go really, really relaxed. Inhale again. Exhale, release. Inhale. Exhale, release. Last one there. And relax. Just take this pillow from underneath your bum, chuck it off to the side, and then I want you to grab either elbow behind the knees. You can't grab the elbows, just Grab the wrists or the hands. Again, resting in that similar position that we've just been in. Rub the arms interlinked behind the knees. Then straighten up those legs. Inhale to exhale there. That's a nice extension up. Slowly release back. Nice extension up. Exhale, release back. I'm going to a little bit of shoulder opening in a second. Take the knees in, rock up towards the top. Again, just come towards the front of your mat. I'm going to sit back like so, so that you can get a little bit of a better view. Going to go into a little bit of a variation, one arm to puppy pose. And before that, we're just going to warm up through the shoulders. So we're going to have thumbs up. You're going to turn the thumbs back and you're going to draw the shoulders through. You're going to go up and round as if you're trying to make this flexing position, and then you're gonna move out and through again. So back, up and round, through. Back, up and round, through. Back, up and round, through. See how I'm getting a little bit of an arch through my spine there as well, extend through. Up and round, good, keep going with that. So you're getting a little bit of the flow with the body and also with the arms. Keep going, a couple more times. Up and round, pull through. Up and round, pull through. Good. Up and round last time. Good. Hands into the sky. I'm going to come down into our puppy pose here. So we'll have the hips directly over the knees, pushing the bum towards the sky, and then sink down through the chest. You don't have to have the, the head up like so. I'm pretty comfortable there, my chin down, but it just depends on how much thoracic extension that you've got. Sink through the hips there. We're going to have a single arm puppy pose here. I'm going to turn the thumb up on that right hand side and try and literally rotate my arm in its socket. So wrap it underneath, wrap it underneath. And then you're going to take your left arm onto your back like so and you're going to sink through the shoulder. Now if you're getting a little bit of a, if you're getting a little bit of pinch through the top of the shoulder and just bend the elbow slightly like that and try and show the palm towards the floor and open up through that armpit a little bit more. I'll just go into the normal puppy pose and sink through, sink through the shoulder. The armpit's going down towards the floor. arms out towards the front. Come into your normal puppy pose. Make sure you're not sitting too far back. Look maybe a little too far back there with the uh, puppy pose. And then again turn the thumb up. And you can use this right hand just to give yourself a little bit more of an easing down into the position. Gives you a little bit more control. Let the thumb turn up on that left Arms sink through the armpit towards the floor. You can rest the head into the ground as well. Release. Good, 
same shoulder, we're going to come back up towards the top point. Bring your knees to the outside of the mat, feet to the outside of the mat. Now, this is a, again a pretty tasty stretch. What I want you to do is I want you to turn the toes outwards. And then you're going to come down towards your elbows if you can, you don't need to. And you need to tilt the hips forward, so tilt the bum into the sky, and then sit down into this position. This is a really good stretch if you're trying to get deep into a squat position. Just highlights the, uh, the tight areas around the hip joint. Keep pushing the bum back. Use the breath. I'm going to spend a little bit of time here. I know it doesn't feel great, but this is where the progression lies. If you get any pain, then come out of it. Back. Always trying to flatten that back off. Bring five more breaths together. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Take yourself out of this slowly. Come into a four point kneeling position and just move around through the left hip. Move around through the right hip. And then drop down into your sphinx pose. We're going to work through a little bit of thoracic extension here. Now, when people are in the sphinx pose, they usually try and crank through the lower back. They don't tuck underneath of the hips. And one thing they don't do is, they don't retract the head. They look up towards the sky, which all it does is it hyperextends your cervical spine. Rather than trying to, if you do this, and you try and draw the chin in, you'll feel it through the mid portion of the back. And that's where we're trying to aim to get this extension. So draw those shoulders back, retract. Relax off, retract. Inhale, exhale. Draw the shoulders back. Make sure the hands are directly in front of the shoulders as well. Inhale. I'm coming into a little bit of a funky stretch next. Relax onto your front. I would stretch your left arm, and this arm here, you're going to bend up and through. So, as you can see, it's in a bent position, and that's what's going to push you round, okay, and open up the chest. Now, straighten off the legs. This might be enough for you, is just pushing through the right hand and creating a little bit of rotation. Try and relax the head there. So, but always draw down with this left shoulder, bottom, bottom arm. What you can do, increase the stretch, you can go up like this, and the right foot comes over the top. It's a little bit more pressure, and it actually you get a good bit of rotation through the thoracic spine there again. And this hand is pushing into the floor, stabilizing control and how much you're getting out of this bottom arm. Breathe Back round towards the centre. Opposite side, so I'll stretch the right arm. We'll be able to see what I'm doing with this arm now. Rotate over onto the right hip, draw down the shoulder and the right arm. See what that feels like. If you're okay, then you can bring left foot up and over. Just hold there. Open up through the hips, open up through the shoulders. And back round towards the front. Push up. 
Come back into child's pose. Step through with both feet and come down onto your back. Squeeze in with both of these knees. Have a little bit of a self massage route moving around. Circular motion on your back. Left to right, right to left. Relax the feet down. You can push the feet out into Shavasana, palms facing upward. A really good meditation to do after this class is the Temple of Tranquility guided meditation that I've done. Thank you for watching.